John. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Actually, I'm more excellent than I ever thought I would be. <laughs> 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 and hopefully next next week, uh, about this time, I won't I won't be any place. Well, I should what was supposed to say Tuesday. I'll be on my way to South Africa the next day. So. And one more week here. Yay. <laughs> well, you travel safe, and uh, I hope it's a fulfilling trip for you. A trip? I'm trying to get back home. I've been away for a year, man. You know, my wife is probably, you know, really upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, look, I want to start talking to you about, uh, uh, because I ran across quite by accident um, uh, this whole, well, electric power or something else, but this is uh, a Superman. The Superman, I really like this guy. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, no, no. He's, he's good. He's good. I, I, I enjoy you know, some of us what he's uh, you know getting out there, and you know, look, and I think we need to utilize whatever form of medium or whatever medium I guess we can to try to get the message out. I mean, there's a group. I don't know, you're here, the 1491. Or is it 14, 1491. They're a, they're like a comedy group. No. They do a bunch of they do some stuff. No. Uh, and some of it's a little off-color, but, you know, I, I think that's fine, too. Well, that's what um, the, the mainstream uh, response to that, whatever have. But I want to talk on about Superman was my, what I like about him. To me, like, for instance, like, for instance the, the, the Native Americans, if you will, they have a certain way of dancing. You know what I mean? They really right, dance right. straight up. There's no, there's none of that booty stuff. I'm not, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say anything against that. That's really, that's really very African and whatever have you. So I'm not going to get into that. You know, the twerking, or whatever have you. But the way they, the way he dances, and the way I see other dances, it's like it, 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 he, um, the, the elders would still be proud, and the younger people can get into it. Now, you know that that's what I'm, I'm looking at there culturally. But then I'm looking at this other thing, of course, I didn't, I haven't been around for a while, so I don't really know about, you know, all the different machinations of different things. But, you know, there's, I guess the very thing is called a, a, a tribe called Red, you know, uh, they, they do this, yep. uh, this electric powwow, whatever have you. Now, they're kind of interesting because, uh, of course, they're informed by the whole generational thing with hip hop and all the rest of that stuff but and, and dance music. But uh, they haven't vented too much, you know what I mean? So the elders might be a little bit upset, but the young people can come in. It's, it's really kind of interesting dynamic. So I just want you to talk about that, this, that, that phenomenon that, that struck me. You know what I mean? Let, leave the comedy out of it because I'm not, not into it right now. Just the music. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, you know, the, the thing about, you know, especially utilizing music, uh, one thing you are reaching out to the the, the younger generation, which is, mm -hmm. is which is really important, and and the fact that you know that actually both um, Dark Ball Red and, and Superman, what these guys are doing are is, is they are infusing some of the stuff from the past and bringing bringing it forward. I mean, the, the Tribe Called Red, you know, a lot of their effort, you know, is born out of the the urban music scene, um, where. Well, I think, I think Superman, his, um, his stuff is, it has a little bit more of a, of a traditional native territory, uh, event to it, even though it is now, you know, become, you know, really, uh, marketable in, you know, across, you know, you know, across, uh, across genres, but certainly, um, both the rural or, or native territory and, uh, and the urban environment. But, uh, you know, I don't know that I would necessarily say that, you know, the older generation, or the or the ancestors, if you will, the elders, would oppose what um, uh, what a tribe called Red is doing. They just may not quite understand it because it is the whole electronic side of it is, uh, and, and the, the, the dance club music kind of thing is, um, it, you know, it's, it's probably a little bit foreign, you know, foreign to them. And and obviously, what what, what Superman does with his, especially integrating dance and traditional dance into it, uh, in, into much of what he does, is is such a big part of it. That I think, even if it's a bit of a stretch um, musically um, or from a genre standpoint, a music genre standpoint, I think he connected back because of uh, you know because you know one of the things you mentioned, it is a unique characteristic to native dance. Um, it you know involves a lot more lifting the knees up and that, and that kind of thing. And even as a, as a even when I was a young younger person going to things like dance clubs, you could always I mean you, you could. If you just saw a silhouette, mm -hmm. even if somebody was dancing to, you know, uh, you know, to, to whatever, uh, in, in to, dance, to P funk, you, hey, to P funk, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you could see a native woman and specifically a native guy, uh, their, their dance style because it's it still somewhat. It, was, it always had a certain reminiscence to the. Um, it's a lot less hip swing than it is 
you know, spinning and, and me with them kind of thing. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Say that again. A lot less hip swing than than, than what? Then, then, you know, then obviously, you know, spinning and, oh, uh, and, and, and the high and lifting of the knees up higher and that kind of stuff. So, you know, double tapping, you know, double tapping of the foot and that kind of stuff. So mm. it, it has, you know, it, it, it's less about, you know, um, you know, again, hip swing and, uh, you know, and, and a lot of the, uh, the other physicality that you would see in not only in, in a dance, you know, that is most affected by black, black folks, um, but even, you know, it, 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 just, it, it has a, a very native characteristic for that way. No, I mean, I, I think that different, for instance, uh, when I was in Senegal, right, they have a way of, uh, let's call it Latin dancing, right? But they sort of stay straight up when they do it. They don't do a whole lot of uh, twirling, whatever, Harry, sure. but you know you, get, you know, you go to Dominican Republic or, you know, you go whatever, Puerto Rico, and they're down. I mean, they're doing all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, you know, merengue and all the rest of that stuff, but they would take the same merengue, say, in West Africa, and they just stand up, but they wouldn't be flashy at all. So it has to be a cultural shift that made that happen, you see. Um, yeah. So, so I, I know things, things like that. And now, so, so we have this whole identity thing. Now we have this thing. Now we we're, now we have to get to. Um, I won't say it seriously, but a whole other thing. Uh, your your uh, uh, this your new uh, what do you call? Who's Dev Holland? What's she called? Her Nate Dev. Whatever. Whatever. What, what's her office? Whatever. She's the interior secretary. Interior secretary. Now, when she got in, you know, everybody has their little thing about it. But one of the things about her is that she had sponsored a bill before she got it. She had sponsored a bill that basically um, cut out a uh, black descendants of enslaved, uh, uh, of enslaved, uh, you know, of slave people from, 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 say, the Seminole tribe. You know what I mean? So in other words, you would have Seminole, right? And then you would have this whole Freedman situation and you have the thing. And because of the Freedman was still sort of culturally uh, Seminole, but she sort of cut that out. She sort of split, split that out. Now, is that true? Or just tell me what that's about. Yeah, I don't know if it was actually so much that she sponsors legislation. I know that she has, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, she's on the wrong side of that issue. She has, um, uh, she's offered very little support to, you know, to the, to the Freedmen. And, and, and the Freedmen is, is basically, uh, um, it came out of more of the Cherokee than anything, especially with the, with the migration and the forced removal of the Cherokee. Um, there were, some native territories, and, and we're going to get into this a little bit more, I'm sure, is there are native peoples who had uh, participated in the slave trade, not just as slaves, which we certainly were, but um, as slaveholders. And when the Cherokee were forced, uh, their forced removal from, from Georgia and, and, and you know, the East, uh, there became a process where the Cherokee had freed the slaves that they had, mm. and they became part of the Cherokee. And over time, there has been, you know, as, especially as there's been more and more, <laughs> when I say race mixing with Cherokee, I'm not talking black, I'm talking white. And more and more race mixing with white uh, has, has occurred in, uh, up in amongst the Cherokee. That division between the Cherokee that were, uh, again, either, of course, they want to be a, considered, a, you know, a higher blood quantum, but the more pure Cherokee and the whiter Cherokee. You know, started kind of railing against the um, the descendants of, of these these adopted Cherokees who were you know, who were former you know former slaves, mm. and so the the rift between the freedmen and and I don't even know why that that label stayed. I mean, in most of our cultures, when you adopt somebody, you no longer refer to them as what they were; you refer to them as who is what they are. And that's that's um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. That's a traditional way of looking at it. In other words, right, you, that's, right. that's I mean, built that's you, built into you know, your, your 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 thing. So this whole Freeman thing was something that um, that I guess who propagated that. Now that's that's what we have to ask. And hold on just a second. Hold on to that. But I want you to also touch on this whole thing about the five dollar Indian and and how you know these white folks got to be Indians. But but continue, continue where you was. Well, and, and so what happened? And, and I guess the other issue that that kind of fed this was the fact that that the 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 black Cherokees you know, had a racial preference towards, uh, you know, towards raising uh, a more black family. There, there, was, there was a whole lot of, you basically had the black Cherokees that were taking on black wives and black husbands, right? So, um, so the question started coming back up about, well, what's your legitimate blood quantum? Are you really, even if you were adopted, you know, back in, at the, at, you know, in the, you know, late 1800s, um, have you maintained, you know, some level of, of, of 
Cherokee culture or whatever else. So this is this is the the, the rip, right? This is the divide. And and I don't know what the circumstances are that would have um, pushed the, the you know the blacker Cherokees, you know, more towards um, an urban you know black urban culture as opposed to being involved more directly in the Cherokee culture. I have my suspicions on that, but. Uh, um, but I don't know. But see, this is where the divide comes in. And this is where I have a problem with Deb Holland. Is I think that she's been on the wrong side of that history. She's also been on the wrong side of a certain um, uh, LGBT to, you know, uh, two-spirit uh, 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 conversations I, I, as it relates to Native people as well. I do have a question. I do have a question. It seems to me there's, I don't want to say this, but there's, there's sort, of, sort of a marked difference between uh, Natives that were in uh, say the South and Southwest versus the natives that were other places like where you are. In other words, you know this also is a phenomenon that happens with, with, with the Chicta and, and the Creek and the, and the, you know I don't know the Chicks, the, the, those kind of folks. So is this just with them or what, what's happening with, with like the, the the northern kind of things? Even I want to go up to Canada, but you know the northern you know the Amer uh, even yeah the, the northern like New York or whatever Pennsylvania wherever you from. I would say I would say the, the quote unquote race mixing that that occurred. Um, amongst Native peoples uh, in the uh, in the East, in the, the woodlands, I guess I would say, and then the, you know the Seminoles uh, and and and, and, and uh, the Tuscarora. For instance. I don't think there was a, there's an acknowledgement. I mean, if you look at the in Long Island with the peak, the, uh, the the Shinnecock and the the uh, um, the uh, Uncle Toad. I mean, there's an acknowledgement that that we were bound together. Um, uh, ethnically because of, of slavery and the slave trade and that kind of stuff. And so I don't think there's the divisiveness. Look, don't get me wrong. Native people have been, you know, pulled into some of this, you know, these, these racist kind of, uh, you know, tropes, you know, when, when it comes to, um, being somewhat derogatory towards, towards blacker Native people than, than whiter Native people. I mean, don't, I'm not saying that doesn't exist, but it never had this, this same level of risk that occurred with, with many of these native territories that, like the Cherokee of Oklahoma, like the Chickasaw, like the Chaka, mm -hmm. they're, it, you know, you know, and, and the crazy part, as dark, you know, and, and similar as some of the features might be between, you know, what I would say, um, you know, one hundred, you know, the hundred percenters, so to speak, you know, compared to, to, you know, to, to many of the, the people who have been enslaved, because don't forget, you know, when we, when we we look at you know what what happened with with, with black people who were enslaved during this period of time, they were they there was all kinds of uh, race mixing that was taking place in, in that mix. Just you know, it's an added purpose than to produce more slaves. But mm. I mean, Thomas Jefferson was, was you know was, was getting his slave pregnant and producing more slaves. I mean, this is so the idea that they somehow. Black people were so distinctly um, different, even visually, from, mm -hmm. from the, that's not as clear as what people like to suggest that it is. So when you start trying to draw, the, you know, somehow this genetic difference between a, you know, a, a, a Native person who has some Black ancestry uh, as opposed to a Native person uh, who is either, you know, a mere of purebred or has white ancestry, there's no question that uh, that out I mean, when you get out west, there is a stronger right wing white supremacy bent even to mm -hmm. even to native territories. Yeah, let me uh, let's let, let's go here for a second. I, everything to me, if you're in the states, even people come here because of this. If you're in the states, everything has to do with the money. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that changed. I mean, if we even go to where when 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 they first uh, realized, hey. Uh, 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 they say Indians, well, natives can have casinos, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, you I'm sure you had big rifts there, and that's where I bring in the, the what I call the $5 Indians, because it just seems oh, to me... Wait, 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 before you go there, hmm. well, let me just clarify, please, clarify something you just said. The idea that native people can have casinos. That sounds like it was a, uh, a gift, like hmm. if somebody gave it to us. And, and I gotta say, the fact that we have done certain things economically, whether it's you know, the tobacco trade or the fuel trade where we where we push back against state regulations and state taxation, or whether it's gaming. We did this. We did this. It wasn't a gift. In fact, we had to mm -hmm. fight every freaking step along the way. You know, and, and and when a major Supreme Court ruling comes in nineteen 
87, uh, where the, Cal- uh, the state of California is trying to shut down a bingo hall on the Cabazon Reservation. Mm-hmm. When that Supreme Court ruling really comes down and the Supreme Court says, well, no, they, they have the right to do that. They didn't give us the right to do gaming. The Supreme Court acknowledged that we had that right. So it wasn't that we were given permission. It's, it, it, and the, the court, the Supreme Court of the United States, and I'm not a big fan of it, but the Supreme Court of the United States said, no, they don't need to be given that right. They have that right. And the state of California can't take that right away. And so that ruling laid the groundwork for the, for Congress to, to scurry and pass the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act that tried to put limits on, on what we could do for gaming. But yeah, I, I do take exception when people say that somehow we were given this right or, or we were... It, or we were allowed. The, mm. the, the, the fact of the matter is, the U.S. law prohibited the states from stopping us from doing gaming. This is a right that we that we had. It mm. wasn't given to us. Mm. So I just want to say that. Yeah. But well, who controlled? Well, now when that started to happen, and people started build uh, uh, casinos. That money had to come from someplace. Somebody had to start funding that, and, and, and then you have to say, well, you know. Uh, uh, Maybe, maybe all of a sudden the, the names became the middle people, or maybe some of them got paid off. I don't know what, 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 what was, what was know, that? That's, that's, what, that's what the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act claimed that they were going to do that they were going to protect Native people from being exploited by organized crime in overly aggressive states. And of course, most of that is bullshit because the biggest organized crime that has come into our casinos has been the state. Mm-hmm. You know, for the most part, you know, we did find means you know, a lot of times we just go. Built these things up slowly, even before they passed the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. We we're already getting involved in higher levels of, of gaming revenue because we could do what the states couldn't do. So, I mean, it didn't take much to throw a bunch of slot machines in a in a pole barn and <laughs> develop revenue and then build it from there. So, a lot of these things were built incrementally. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we also did find, you know, other funding sources. And uh, and the one thing I will say that Igra did do, you know, uh, uh, along with you know trying to put limits on how we we conduct gaming. It created a legal framework so that lenders, vendors, you know, any contractors that we now they had the protection. Now it wasn't about for us, mm. but they had the protection of, of federal law, where they didn't have to worry about whether a state would challenge their 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 operating license or their or their their gaming license. Because if you have gaming vendors, then you know that are catering to Vegas or Atlantic City, they sure as hell don't want to risk it by. You know, by throwing up, you know, by mm. contracting with a, with some native territory out, and you know, you know, on bum truck, uh, you know, for you know, for a couple of hundred slot machines. So this opened the door for vendors to feel more comfortable because they had the protection of the uh, of the federal statute. Mm. But you know, I'll, I'll I'll say it all the time: the, the federal government didn't give us permission. IGRA, the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, didn't give us permission to do gaming. If anything. It, uh, it, it created more obstacles. Yeah, and now, now I have to. Now we have to go to to, to the uh, big thing now because let me show you my my little journey and this little thought here. Uh, when uh, Bernie Sanders was running, you know, uh, 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 he said, uh, well, his wife especially, they talked a little. They talked a little, yeah, and they, they brought up Native Americans. You know, this I'm um, talking talk about in in sixteen or whatever. When, or even yep. for, for, they, he, or even be, well, he, yeah, when he was running. He, I actually, they, you know, I actually had James Sanders on my show in New York. Ah, ah. Well, did, anyway, so they have to sort of they they, they so, sort of stuck that into the conversation where it really wasn't before. You know, nobody right. else was talking about that, right? And then we move along. Let me let me just skip really uh, up to Joe 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 Biden. The same thing when they asked about reparations, right? He said, "Oh yeah, black and and and, and Indians or, or or Native Americans." I said, "Wait a second, hey, how are we talking about reparations for you know ADOS? Well, how did they slip in there?" So he slipped that in there. Now he has this bill. They put that this little uh, with whatever one point nine trillion, whatever they given 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 money away, and like thirty one uh, a billion of that is going to natives, right? Remember, remember, they they they, they didn't get into conversation until Bernie brought him in, and then Joe latched on that. And I'm looking at this and say, oh, another thing they want to smash the black people. I'm not saying the people shouldn't get money, but why? Why is that? You know, what I mean? and even when they say um, in this bill, there's something about the farmers or whatever have you. And even with that, they keep they, they they say, oh, not just not just black farmers. It's like a, a, a it's disadvantage or something like that. So we never, at least, uh, at least ADOs never gets a pure thing for themselves. It always gets obfuscated or something like that. I mean, do you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from? Do you understand why this is like, I'm just looking at this stuff and I'm being, people are being suspect. Let's put it that way. No, I mean, there, there seems to be, you know, 
like it's a competition or something like that. And and, I, and frankly, the characterization is is pretty far off. I mean, let let's be clear. The from what I understand, the thirty billion dollars, most of that is going towards uh, towards health issues, towards healthcare, and. And healthcare has been an absolute travesty as it relates to the federal government's response and responsibility. That's the other thing. Mm. All of this land, it was native land. And the fact that, that almost none of it is today, it, 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 you know, it, it wasn't, this wasn't conquest. This wasn't to, to the victor goes to spoils. Most mm. of this was, was done through fraud. Through, I mean, our, you know, in the Mohawk language, language, our word for the, for the word treaty was we give up our land. <laughs> I mean, that's literally the way, you know, and, and that's the way our word was translated. So we knew what they, what this was always about. But, and, and, and everyone says, well, yeah, didn't they pay you for that? And, you know, look, there, there were certain, um, certain conversations that oftentimes didn't just even never came or came so late that the people who were actually compensated weren't the ones who, who were the victims of the displacement in the first place. But, <laughs> On top of all that was a firm commitment, you know, that was always expressed with, with almost every one of these things. And it was either explicit or implicit that the United States, knowing that it was, that it was canceling much of our culture when it comes to how we were going to sustain ourselves, how we were going to feed ourselves, how we were, you know, what we we're going to do as, you know, as, as for sustenance, that they took out certain responsibilities. And among those responsibilities, healthcare was one. Yeah. And immediately, the United States failed at that on that front. In, in every instance, I mean, there was never a situation where Native people were provided the health care that they were promised. Now, we can argue, well, that's not fair. Why should Native people get health care? It's because you just built their whole fucking country on our land. That's why we deserve health care. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. If there's no. I mean, there's no debate about that, right? So, yeah. so the fact <laughs> that that they now are doing what I wouldn't say is a gift. I'm not getting any of that $31 billion. Mm -hmm. It's going to go into, into Indian health services, which oftentimes the, the, the sheer bureaucracy of it will, will swallow up major portions of that dollar before any Native people see any of it. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that some of our territories have, have been trying to wean themselves from the dependency on Indian health services, and mm -hmm. um, you know, in some cases we will see very little. We have died at a higher rate than anybody else as a result of COVID-19. Well, there's no question about that. And the, the, the numbers are what they are. And part of the reason is not because we don't have clinics on our territory. Right? It's because they're completely underfunded. And you know what? Here's the part that's really <laughs> shitty is what the federal government did. Is they actually dumped mo a lot of that responsibility to funding, the funding that goes into our clinics by, by dumping it onto the state and, and the state's Medicare and Medicaid program. And so, in order for me to get service at the clinic, I, they, they, uh, as you in San Francisco, they want me to apply for Medicare, Medicaid. And, and, and I, so, I either have to have my own insurance or I have to prove that I, that I, that I can't have my own insurance. And, and that's, how, and that's on the front. And then what they don't cover, Indian, Indian Health Service may kick something in. So, this $31 billion that, that, that you mentioned and others, uh, other black folks have mentioned, like somehow, oh, that's wrong. Well, Native people are getting something. What about black people? Yeah. Well, but that's the, like me standing up and opposing any push for reparations for uh, for defendants of uh, descendants of slaves. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would I would take uh, I would take extreme offense to anybody who was saying. Now, that's not to say that there shouldn't be a conversation about other countries. That, you know, Ben Canada has done, uh, done it, and I'm not saying they've done a great job with it. Everything from reparations associated with, with the residential schools. Mm -hmm. But when you consider what Native people, we are the most marginalized people in the, uh, uh, in the United States. And there's no question about that. We have the, the prime rates of 85% unemployment. 85% unemployment. Not, not 18%. 85% unemployment. We have the highest suicide rates. We have the highest substance abuse rates. We have the highest rates of, of depression, of missing and murdered indigenous women. All of that stuff is, is tied to the poverty that was created by U.S. policy against Native people. Now, the, the argument could be, well, can't we just live like other Americans and, you know, and migrate to the cities? And, uh, and yeah, we, we could do that. But, you know what, that's, that's also genocide. So, I mean, the, the whole idea that, that the, in fact, the intention of creating abject poverty in Native territories was to make us disappear. 
was to make our lives undesirable on native territories. And you know what? Our lives are pretty undesirable on most native territories. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why we, we meet every category that we want to leave. So I take real offense to the suggestion that somehow, you know, we are being taken care of at the expense of, 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 of black people getting, you know, getting just, just reparation. I mean, I think that's absurd. I don't. I don't know if that's how, how, how I would put it, but but, but I, I guess what I'm saying is that this yeah, would, no, here's, you, here's how, here's how we, he, he, you, you did put it that way. Okay. I mean, you did put it that way. He, he, you, you, you framed thirty one million dollars billion dollars coming to native territory in the context of wait, what about us? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly how you framed it, right? Okay. 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 I'll I'll I'll, I'll deal with that. Here's the thing, you know. Uh, let me see how we used to say where it on the street is. In other words, the perception is it's like okay. Give you what you need, right? But how come every time we bring up some, we're the ones that brought this stuff up. Every time we bring stuff up, right? We're always the last to be served. In other words, it seems like everybody j- jumps on it, they get it, and then we're still left uh, uh, behind. That's, I mean, that's the big argument that folks are, 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 are yeah, dealing but, with. Yeah, well, you brought one up. You, you brought the fact that the United States has screwed up out of, out of their commitment on health. <laughs> no, I'm, talk- I'm talking that's, about... That's, that's the issue here. I'm talking about... I mean, the, I'm talking about the, no, the no, I'm talking about the notion of reparations and and and, and how do you how do you uh uh, uh um well, well, how, let's be clear we're not getting any reparations mm-hmm. any right reparation. right 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 no 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 and, I, and, and and you know so I mean I mean and, and it's true I mean one of the problems is it is difficult in U.S. law to to target um a program, even if it things like affirmative action and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. towards a specific race of Americans. Right. And, and and part of it has to do, you know, with the way they colored their law and that kind of stuff, no pun intended. But, um, and, and there had to be, and in fact, this is part of the debate they had happening in Hawaii today. Because the problem is that even though Native Hawaiians are, are certainly do um, uh, something, for, for the fact that they got, you know, that the United States illegally occupied their their kingdom, this, you know, dethroned their queen, took over the land, annexed the land, and now you know they live in the same kind of object poverty uh, as, as Native Hawaiians that Native that Native people do on the continent. But the, the effort that that the Obama administration was trying to do, um, and and it looks like Biden to try this, is to turn them into an Indian tribe because if they can designate. There's already been some sort of legal remedy by designating designated a people as a as a as a tribe or band or nation of Indians that that they could they can legally um, you know create funding mechanisms. In the absence of that, it, it ends up to being a constitutional question. So yeah, there's no question that that affirmative action was its intent was to uh, was to uh, um, Make a correction on you know uh, on, on what black what the black experience has been. There's no question that the the, the Voting Rights Act you know uh, was intended. Its intent was to make a correction on what what the black experience was. And even this, this farm bill you know, that they, they yes they do have to frame it so they, they include other you know disadvantaged people. But there's no question that that the, that the the intent it was to you know was to make a correction for the black experience. Now. I mean, and I'm not justifying the fact that that you are not getting, you know, a targeted reparation. I think that is still something that should happen. But you know what? Native people aren't getting a targeted reparation either. Mm-hmm. And so the idea that anybody is framing it that way, and 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 again, this whole "what about us?" you know stuff. I mean, none of this whatever this, this money is that's heading towards Native territory. You know, there is so much that need, that has been done to Native people. So much is done to our land in terms of decimating, you know, the, the, the land and, and you know, extractive industry. We got open pit uranium mines through much of the, uh, you know, the, the, the northern plain uh, native territory, and where where those those the, the cancer crust was caused by these open that are still open to this day, you know, because of the you know the, the lust for for you know, uranium for for war, not even for for uh, um, uh, nuclear power plants. But I mean, so this is this is the, the circumstance that exists. So, I mean, there's any number of of, of ways. I'm looking, I mean, you know what the Cabell suit is? The what? Elo- Eloise Cabell. No. She she helped um, initiate a class action suit against the Driven Universe because they couldn't account for thirty billion dollars 
of Native assets. And when I say it's going to come, look, they, as the their so-called trust responsibility, they were responsible for everything from leases to oil revenue. The Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, had, couldn't even tell people whose land was assigned. They, they, their accounting was so terrible. In fact, that same um, accounting for uh, Arthur Anderson that was, that was, you know, all messed up with that whole Enron scam, they were hired by the Interior Department, by the federal government, to, to try to do some sort of forensic audit on what the Bureau of Indian And they said, this, this is such a mess. You just need to settle. So you know what? That, you know, during the Bush administration, they had, they, you know, I, I said 30, 30 uh, billion, but it was actually, um, that's the low end. Um, and that's what they could, they could uh, determine that there was a $30 billion loss, ironically, right? That, 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 was, that was the Bush administration, the Bush administration you said? No, the, the Bush administration wanted to settle somewhere along the line. By the time Obama got in office, it was 10 cents on the dollar. And then they were told that if you didn't sign, and this included a lot of people, even out here, because the Cabal students included a lot of what they were considering these individual Indian money accounts that the, the Interior Department was managing. So Native people had to sign off to get a $1,600 check to sign off that they would they would pursue no longer or no longer pursue any any action uh, on this uh, on this complete fraud committed. And look, a lot of this fraud had to do with. Uh, with, with paying pennies on the dollar for, for oil leases, uh, misdirecting, you know, where the payments were supposed to go, a, a, a complete obliteration of, of tracking whose land title was whose. I mean, and that's what the whole basis of the, of the suit was in the first place. So this $30 billion coming from uh, from, <laughs> from the stimulus package doesn't, you know, doesn't even address the fact that, that the Obama administration screwed the pooch when it came to uh, uh, settling what would have been a proper settlement for over the Cabell suit. So, yeah. I mean, and that's kind of addressing the atrocities that were committed. That's just, you know, that's just, you know, theft, you know, of, yeah. of, 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 the, of the money, right? So, yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I I really find it hard to believe that a, a, the, a, the case that, that, you know, that anybody wants to make, that somehow... You know, we are unjustly being, uh, be, what, pushed to the front of the line ahead of black people on this? I mean, I, I just think that is, mm. I mean, I, I'm offended by it. I'm offended by it. Okay, let, let, and let, I'm not let, even a big fan of the whole stimulus thing in the first place. I think, uh, I, you know, I it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. benefit from this <laughs> in a much bigger way than anybody else. Yes. Even that $1,400 the check that people are getting. Who do you think is going to benefit from no, that? It's going to immediately up, up a miss of people of color is going to take you know, go through our through our hands and going to go break back into. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, no, we, we already, for most folks can really see the reality because a lot of these folks are getting it that have incomes anyway, they're still working, but they, or they, whatever, they, so family members are getting it and then they put into other things. They don't really need it. But let me, let me go, I want to bring this back around because I see this history, like the reason why I brought up Bernie Sanders and then Biden doing what he's doing, they, it seems like every turn, the, the whole modus operandi for every, everything is to, uh, it's just divide, 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 continue to divide. The more you can divide, the more you can conquer kind of thing. And I'm looking at a thing like the electric, like, like electric power phenomenon, like, like, like Superman, uh, uh, to, to sort of bring, and, and of course, you know, anything that, that, that the, uh, Black community, others who can bring together culturally can bring folks together because they're, they're more together that way because politics pulls people apart in the name of money, whatever the name of money. So um, I, I guess I'm asking, well, what do you think is happening? What do you think is going to happen with, uh, with culturally? Culturally, is there a, a way culturally or an, another avenue uh, uh, that, that, that we can resolve this kind of stuff? Because, again... If if Tribe Called Red starts playing, I don't know, uh, you know, if they start playing some, some, I don't know, say say Malcolm X over their beats, you know what I mean, or some whoever over their beats, then then you see then then something starts to happen. Well, I mean, I, I think that, I think we those of us who are responsible uh, amongst our people, we need to push back when 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 when, pe when people start jumping to this divisive car. I mean, I, I thought that video that you sent me with this guy railing against Native people, mm -hmm. you know, getting this. You know, and, and again, nobody's cutting at the check for 30, $31 billion. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole idea, look, did you, have you seen the movie Rumble? Rumble? Yeah. Are you MBLE? Yep. Is it, it's new? No, it's, it's old. It's been around for a while. It's about Link Ray, and Rumble is a uh, guitar lick that, you know, uh -huh. that, that he was, it's called How Indians Rock the World or something like that. 
and Rumble. Let me write, uh, let me write that history. down. But, uh, Rumble, yeah. You need to watch that film because there you see now there you see culture. In fact, some of the, the uh, uh, people who are uh, featured prominently is Tira Fey, and you know Tira Fey is texture and she's you know I think she may even have some uh, Taino in her. But she also, you know, uh, she's, she's a race mixed in, individual. She well, what, primarily identifies as Tessera. I mean, well, I'm sorry, what, is, what, what's her name again? Pura Fey. It's Spell it. P-U-R-A-F-E. Pura Fey. She's a, she's a very accomplished musician. But, you know, and, but she's saying she, she's, she's black, Puerto Rican, and, uh, and, and, and Tessera, you know, basically. And, <laughs> you know, but this, this whole thing is about how the, the black and native experience in terms of music, you know, melt together. It, it, Jimmy Hendrix was, uh, was, was, you know, was Cherokee and, and black, you know, so it, it, it brings a lot of this back together. You gotta watch that film. I think it, it, it'll, um, it, I think you'll be impacted by it. It's a pretty good film. Yeah. Um, the- uh, I'm not, I'm, I sort of want to try to wind this down because you know you have stuff to do. I'm sure you have stuff to do. You're much more busy than anybody <laughs> else. Because let me just say, uh, a group that I work with in South Africa, when I started working with them, and I was talking about liberation, I said, look, you have to understand, you have to liberate the entire planet. Even if you liberate your corner here in South Africa, your job is not done. Yeah, people are going to sit down and say and start to benefit off of that stuff like that. But then you got to go. Now, specifically, <laughs> was talking about uh, 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 a documentary I said, I said so you, you know. Uh, you you have to also now liberate other groups. You know your your, your responsibility, even sitting in South Africa, you really got to deal with American Indians that are on these reservations. They specifically said that, so it's almost like I, I think what happens with these again this dividing kind of thing. Even if you get something, you have to in in your getting that you have to sort of do something. Well, for for the for the rest of the downtrodden, I always identify with the downtrodden. By the way, well, and, 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 I, and I agree with you. And one of the things that, that I gotta say, I mean, getting back to your, your earlier question about how we you know. I gotta tell you, you know, I was I, I fully supported the Black Lives Matter movement. I marched down Seventh Avenue after Freddie Gray, and you know, I, I was in New York that day. That you know, uh, you know, I, I, I fully supported, it. and I didn't do it with, with some ulterior motive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, you know, I, but I also know that Native people actually die um, by cops at a higher rate, not a higher volume, but a higher rate. Than than, uh, than than black people do. Yeah. So I mean, the idea of me standing with Black Lives Matter as it related to you know to death by cop and you know police abuse and all that stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a certain self serving part of it, but I didn't need to co opt that. I did not need to throw. I didn't need to say Native Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The message was clear, and 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 lo and behold, when Confederate statues are being torn down, Columbus statues got torn down too. Lo and behold, in the midst of this wave of social call for social justice, in the wake of George Floyd and uh, and Brad Taylor and Black Lives Matter, the Washington football team changes its name. The Cleveland baseball team changes its name. So there was this sense of unity in this call for social justice, and we didn't. And nobody had to like. We didn't have to co-op. It it, it happened naturally. But you know what? In order to, for it to happen naturally, we had to. Make sure that those voices who are going to say, "Hey, oh, fuck those guys," they're getting something, and I'm not. Mm-hmm. We, ha- we we actually have to have to push back on 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 that divisiveness. Because oftentimes, yeah, it, that seed might get planted by the outside, but man, we are we are, we sure don't mind cultivating some of that sometimes. But Black Lives Matter to me, we became the beneficiary of that movement. We as Native people. And, and you can see it in, in things like, look, we've been fighting against the Washington football team's racial slur for, for 60 or 70 years. And it, and it, and it doesn't change until, it, uh, until the George Floyd murder. And, and look, don't get me wrong, Daniel Snyder, the owner of Washington football, he didn't change the name because he, he finally had his come to Jesus meet, uh, uh, you know, moment. It was because the financial ones have said, look, this social justice thing is going in a direction. We better, we better. Uh, understand that that this is this is real, and we better respond to it. So that's when FedEx and Nike and Amazon and Walmart and Target and all these other uh, major funders of, of uh, the NFL said to Washington, "Yeah, you need to change that move." Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> listen, John. I'm, 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 I want to deal with Black Lives Matter because you know the whole leadership of that. That's we won't get into that right now. But uh, this. Well, is the, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about the leadership. Yeah, I'm talking I, I about just, I was about, about to say it's more the movement because 
nobody decided at a, at a leadership level, oh yeah, we need to, we need to include Native people. No, it happened, what I'm saying is that it happened almost organically. That's exactly what I was going to get at. The, 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 basically, the downtrodden had a vehicle, you know, even though it, the, the, those things get, uh, get get pimped at a, a game at a certain level. Well, listen, and, and I, had to, I had to shut down Native voices who were, who were condemning about, you know, about Black Lives Matter or that it said, you know, who, who wanted to somehow co-opt it and throw it. I, you know, I, I had to push back and look, we don't need to say Native Lives Matter. Because if Black Lives Matter, if we can, if we, you know, and, and clearly society is suggesting that their lives are, are left important. If we support that, we, we become, you know, we are, served, we are served by that movement. Just as it is, just as it's stated, we didn't need to use All Lives Matter or, or Native Lives Matter or Red Lives Matter. We didn't need to do any of that shit. So I had to push back against some of that call from some of the native people, and, yeah. and I and, and I don't know if there was ever any. I never heard anybody complain. Why the hell? Is, why did the Black Lives Matter movement turn into Washington changing its thing? I mean, and trust me, you can bet there's a black people who were pissed about Washington football changing its name. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, there's always going to be so. Hey, it's a big crowd. You know, the stadium is full. You know, so you, that happens. Well, listen, uh, listen. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm leaving the states. Hopefully, back, 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 back to. Uh, well, no, but, 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 yeah, and then when I get there, the people will say, "Take me back to the states." You know, but I'll be back in July. So I, I wanted to get you in before I left. But I really had to talk to you because you know I love talking to you, and I'm sure by July, or August, some other stuff will happen. And then we'll have to talk again. I really appreciate these times you, you spent with me. <laughs> well, that's a fact. That'll happen. Okay. Uh, hey, if, uh, if you ever need to reach out to me from, from, from South Africa, you know, don't be afraid to use Skype or Zoom or something like that. We can connect that somehow. All right, man. I'll take you. All right. You I'll take you. All right. Later. All right. All right.